The iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max offer the best quality video in a smartphone with the introduction of ProRes Apple Log. But to make the most of this amazing feature and transform your phone into a pocket-sized filmmaking powerhouse, you need an external SSD drive to plug into your phone to capture the highest quality video settings possible. I've figured out the most minimalist filmmaking setup that allows you to capture the best video and get the most cinematic images without turning your phone into some sort of modified tank. I will put links to all the parts I mentioned in the description so you can build this rig super easily. Now, I've seen all sorts of SSD solutions for the iPhone 15 Pro, but almost all of them have the same problem. They take your compact, portable, slim iPhone and make it bulky and much less convenient. For me, the best camera for vlogging or spontaneous filming is always going to be the one that fits in your pocket. If it doesn't fit in your pocket, then does it really make sense anymore? I mean, if you're going to supersize your phone with massive add-ons and cumbersome rigs, then you may as well just get an actual camera that is the same size and offers a superior image and better recording solutions. So for my rig, I needed to find something that did away with the big SSD drives and bendy cables. I didn't want to put my phone inside a giant cage or throw on some handles. I wanted the cleanest, smallest, simplest solution possible. First, we need an SSD drive, and while there have been many suggestions to use Samsung T7s and Crucial X9s, they then need to be solidly connected to your phone using its MagSafe or smartphone cage to remain securely in place, and they start making the phone way too big. But then I stumbled across something much smaller, the JE2230M2 enclosure through a YouTuber linked in the description. These SSD enclosures are designed for tiny M2 NVMe drives. They're only $20 on Amazon. You then need to purchase the NVMe drive to put inside it. I found this affordable Kingston one terabyte SSD on Amazon for $86. Now you just remove the screws on the enclosure with the supplied Phillips head, place the NVMe drive inside, place a little bit of thermal paste on top of the NVMe and close the enclosure. To connect it to the phone, I use the USB-C Type-C to Type-C 180 degree right angle adapter, which allows me to plug the SSD into the phone and have it lying flat against the phone itself. There are lots of different versions of this adapter online, but you do want to use a high speed 40 gigabytes per second version to allow you to uh, record at the highest quality without dropping frames. And I use this because I find it fits very flush against my phone case. But if you're paranoid about wiggle, you can add a small Velcro pad to the drive and the bottom of your phone as I've done to make sure that this SSD drive is perfectly locked in. But to get the best, most cinematic image out of your iPhone, you're also going to need ND filters. You see, if you allow the iPhone itself to auto expose your scenes, it will adjust the shutter speed to compensate. This will lead to very weird looking movement from anything inside your frame and well, it just looks ugly. So just like a regular cinema style camera, you need to fix your shutter speed at double your frame rate. The only way to keep your iPhone correctly exposed on bright sunny days will be placing an ND filter in front of your lens. This way you can keep your shutter speed at the correct setting while keeping your image correctly exposed. That's where the Freewell Sherpa case comes in. Now, I've looked at all different cases and cages you can get and most of them wind up adding too much size and weight to your phone. Exactly the thing we want to avoid. But the Sherpa case looks like just a regular protective iPhone case. It's not heavy, it's not massive, but it can take its own proprietary ND filters, which simply snap on magnetically to the case. This is good for two reasons. One, you can remove them very quickly without screwing and unscrewing them. Two, they're nice and small, so even if you keep them on, the whole rig still fits in your pockets, no problem. I recommend the two variable ND filters with the one to six and six to nine stops of ND, which also includes a built-in glow mist filter. Why do you need a glow mist filter along with a variable ND? Well, even though filming an Apple log removes a lot of the digital sharpness from the image, it's still pretty sharp. And 
This mist filter along with the ND helps to take that ugly digital feel away from your images and make them soft and beautiful. Both sets of ND filters allow you to maintain correct exposure on the brightest of days and the standalone Glomus filter can be used at night when ND filters are not required. So now we have the perfect compact iPhone 15 Pro or Pro Max filmmaker setup. But there's a couple of extra things you could think about if you really want to make the most out of this new iPhone rig. First, let's talk about gimbals. Now, filming static shots is going to be easy with my setup and you can add a simple iPhone clip to this rig to put the phone on any tripod. But what if you want to introduce movement to your shots? Because the iPhone is so small and our rig keeps it that way, we can put this on a gimbal for beautiful tracking shots. In fact, the iPhone 15 Pro filming in log might be the best camera to use with a gimbal thanks to how light it is and how good the autofocus is and how easy it is to set up. I could see people replacing their large DSLR cameras and just using an iPhone for things like real estate work and those classic West Wing walk and talk shots. The gimbal I recommend is the Hohim iSteady M6 which will comfortably take the weight of our iPhone rig setup and has excellent features such as AI tracking with hand gestures with the AI tracking sensor. If you don't need fancy AI tracking, then just purchase the gimbal standalone as it will still do everything you need to get those buttery smooth tracking shots. Now, let's talk about the size of these files. Shooting an Apple ProRes log at 4K in the native iPhone app is gonna give you crazy file sizes. Not only that, but when you film in log, you see the image in log, and that makes it very hard to expose correctly or know exactly what you're doing. The solution, the Blackmagic Camera app. Now, this app is free to download from the App Store and allows you to do much more control over your camera settings. It also allows you to film in ProRes LT and proxy modes, not just ProRes HQ. And this means you can save a ton of file space while still capturing high quality video. I recommend ProRes LT as the perfect compromise between quality and file size. You can also download and apply LUTs to your image while recording, which means you can actually see what the final image will look like rather than the desaturated gray log image. I'll provide a link to the LUT I like to use, but you simply download it to your phone import to your LUTs folder in the Blackmagic app and then choose to view with LUT applied. Now you can truly see what you're filming with ease. There's only one drawback to this iPhone rig. When you put the filter over the camera lenses, you cover the front facing microphone, which means your audio quality is really gonna suffer. And because you're running directly into an SSD, you can't plug in a microphone for audio. This is an example of the audio with the ND filter placed over the front facing microphone. This is an example of the iPhone's microphone picking up audio when there's no filter on its front. The best solution for this is to record your audio separately. And the simplest way to do this is to purchase a lav mic like the Rode Wireless Go 2, which can record internally into their transmitters directly. Yes, you'll have to sync this audio to your image in post, but as a workaround to keep things as stripped back as possible, it works just fine. And this is an example of the Rode Wireless Go 2's audio coming from this lavalier, which is synced to the iPhone in post. Can you use the iPhone 15 Pro with this rig and really compete with a true video or cinema camera? I dedicated a whole video comparing the iPhone 12 to a RED camera with a shot-by-shot -shot comparison, which you can watch here. Back then, I said no. But a lot has changed with introduction of Apple Log. And I think the word compete is probably not the right word. While the iPhone 15 may not directly compete, it can most definitely complement a regular camera without it feeling like smartphone footage, like I'm doing right now as I record this talking head on my iPhone 15 Pro. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please consider giving it a like and subscribing. If you want to create this rig for yourself, consider using my links below as affiliate revenue helps support the channel. 
As always, I am the Savage Filmmaker, and I'll see you when I see you.